Greetings, Jelly Spoons, and welcome back to another Monday Madness. I am in cosplay, and I'm not sorry about it. If you know what character I'm currently cosplaying, well bloody done! 100 points to you, you can claim them down in the comments below. Chuck your guesses down in the comments below. Hint hint! Russian musical. As usual, if you would like to support me in my hours of chaos, then you can support me by commissioning a personal character message on my Kofi page from Molly Mock Tea Leaf, Kingsley, Lucian, Peter Pan, and of course Park from Midsummer Night's Dream. Sadly, I cannot speak Russian and therefore cannot do this character, but I would if I could. You can also support me as and when you would like to on my Kofi as well. If you'd like to support me monthly for a minimum of $3 a month, you can join my Patreon as well. You get myriad of different things on my Patreon. You can see pictures of different things. You can join my Discord, etc., etc., and you get pictures of my dog. So there are amazing things like that if you would like to join me on Patreon. In the meantime, let's get on with this episode of Monday Madness. All right, Jelly Spoons, it is December. I am filming this on December the 4th? Yeah? Thanks? At some point in the first week of December, I am filming this video, and that means that I am getting into a slightly festive mood. And I figured, well, this character looks a little bit festive -y. Yeah, he's wearing red. He looks like a walking ball of tinsel, so hey, we're gonna do something fairly festive. So today I am going to get into the Christmas spirit by making five festive and Christmas characters as D&D characters. So I asked a bunch of people on my Discord server to suggest Christmas characters from Christmas movies, TV shows, that kind of thing, and I took some of those suggestions and I am going to make five of them into Dungeons & Dragons playable characters. I'm not gonna go too far into this, I'm not gonna dig too deep, I'm not gonna level them all up and talk about feats and things like that, I'm not gonna give them stats and builds, I'm just going to give them a race, a class, and a background. Oh, and an alignment as well. So, without further ado, who is the first selected character? The first character chosen by my wonderful jelly spoons is Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. I'll insert a picture here. I also cosplayed Jack at one point. So, uh, let's talk about Jack Frost. Jack Frost started life as a human. It would be very easy for me to therefore make him a human. However, I have decided not to. Because in the movie and in his background story, Jack may have started life as a human, but he definitely is not a human anymore. And therefore, I have decided that the race Jack Frost will be as my player character is either a water or an air genasi. Now I couldn't really decide which one. The air genasi works because he flies around everywhere and there's wind in his hair and things, but the water genasi I feel could do more with ice. So pick whichever one of those you would like to down in the comments below, have a little vote if you want. So I'm leaning towards air genasi by about this much, but water genasi is still up there. So that is his race. His class was an interesting one because originally I was torn towards druid and then a little bit of sorcerer and I thought he could maybe specialize in sort of cold and frost branches of magic. But then I thought about the man in the moon in his story who sort of gave him his powers and made him become a guardian. And I decided actually I'm gonna make Jack Frost a warlock. So his patron is gonna be the man in the moon or the closest we can get to that in game. And then I would work closely together with the DM to make sure that without breaking the game, any spells that he had could be specifically cold or frost or just weather related in general. When I was looking through backgrounds for Jack Frost, only one jumped out at me and it's not from the core handbook. So it took me a little while to find, but when I did, it was just exactly what I wanted. So I have decided Jack Frost's background is something called Fey Lost. In the description it says this can be a child who wandered into the Fey Realm, or who was taken into the Fey Realm, or tricked into the Fey Realm, or accidentally fell into the Fey Realm, and ended up spending a lot of time in this fantasy world and then came back. And so I feel like that description does fit Jack Frost quite well actually. In the movie of course, he spends a lot of time not quite being able to connect with the humans of the world that he once inhabited. And I think that that can reflect in his story here in D&D as well. So working that into a backstory that is roughly the same as the one he had in the movie, I put Jack as Fey Lost. So our first Christmassy D&D player character is Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. He is an air slash water genasi warlock with his patron being the man in the moon. His background is the Fey Lost. And considering everything about his character, I'd probably put his alignment around chaotic neutral. Character number two was a very popular choice. This is Skeleton Jack from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas movie. You can watch it at Halloween and Christmas and I'll hear nothing more about it. So Skeleton Jack was difficult. Originally I was looking for a sort of skeletal race that he could be. I was thinking maybe he could be a lich, he could be an undead, he could be a zombie, that kind of thing. I was even leaning towards vampire at one point, but then I thought about the movie again. And I thought about how Jack likes to dress up and make his face change and how he could go from being scary under your bed and popping out of a closet and he wants to be Santa and he wants to be all these different things and how he can scare pretty much any child in the world 
just by being him. And I thought, well, that means he could be a changeling. So I decided to put Skeleton Jack as a changeling, and maybe he can have the sort of skeleton form as his base, his sort of neutral form that he wears the most often. But when he goes to scare people or do something strange or whatever he's doing in game, he can sort of shift a little bit, maybe to someone with a just, you know, stretchier face, that kind of thing. Which means that in game, he'd be really good to go and intimidate people and then shift into something else that they won't recognize. He could also sort of shift into whatever anyone fears the most and he could use it for good things as well. He could be entertaining, that kind of thing. So I decided Skeleton Jack's race is going to be a changeling. To pick Jack's class, it really didn't take me very long. I didn't crack open any books at all. I didn't scroll down any lists. I just thought of the first one that came into my head and went, yeah, that works. And it's from the basic D&D handbook. And it is, of course, the Bard. I think Skeleton Jack would be a Bard. It would go very well with his changeling persona. He could scare people and he could entertain people. Because in the movie, while he is scaring people, it is for entertainment, even if it's not for the person involved. So I think you could harness that and use that as a D&D character. So entertaining is the route I decided to go down for Jack. You could make him scary, a bit like, spoilers, a certain character in Critical Role Campaign 3, although I would argue that is hilarious as well as being scary. But he could be terrifying and entertaining, and I think Bard encompasses all of that, especially if you boosted his charisma stats and things like that. Bard would definitely work very well for Skeleton Jack. For Skeleton Jack's background then, I was almost leaning towards criminal just based on his terrifying history. However, I then read about charlatans and how they sort of get into people's heads and under people's skin and they can gain people's trust or they can be intimidating. And I thought that is more Jack than just being straight up criminal. So I've decided that Skeleton Jack's background would therefore be charlatan. Alignment wise then, I think it would be very easy to just plonk Jack down in evil and leave it there. However, I don't think that's necessarily true. While you could very easily play him as chaotic evil or even neutral evil, I actually think that the two Jacks might be sticking together on this one and Skeleton Jack might join Jack Frost in being chaotic neutral. Because while he does try to do good, it's not necessarily for other people, it's for the good of himself or the people in his town. And while some of the things he does are sort of evil and bad, He's not trying to hurt people. He's not trying to cause harm or kill anybody as far as I can tell. Or we watch the movie again later and double check. It just seems like it's for scares, for shock value. So I personally wouldn't play him as evil. I will put both Jacks together therefore and I will make him chaotic neutral as well. So our second festive character is Skeleton Jack from A Nightmare Before Christmas. He is a changeling bard charlatan who is, again, chaotic neutral. Alrighty then, moving into slightly darker territory for our third festive character, and the character I had suggested to me is Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. There have been many different versions of Scrooge over the years, but the one I'm going to go with is my favourite, which is from A Muppet's Christmas Carol. As most of us will probably know from his story, A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge is a pretty horrible man who ends up turning good in the end. Now I'm going to put a pin in that for a second, and I'll come back to that in his alignment. Now, I would argue that you could play Scrooge as whatever kind of race you would like to. I think he would fit in pretty much any of them. Just, you know, chuck a nighty and a bed cap on and go to town. However, I am going to make him a human. I'm going to make him as close to the Michael Caine Muppets Christmas Carol as I can. So I'm going to put my Scrooge as just an old human male. I did a lot of digging into the background and the history of Scrooge's character as I was trying to decide what I did for his class. And what I ended up deciding was that he is a wizard. Stick with me on this one. Originally, Scrooge wasn't actually a horrible kid. When he was growing up, he was a little bit lonely and eventually a lot of things happened to him that made him into the bitter old man that he turned into. However, originally he was just a young boy who really liked to learn. He stayed at school over the Christmas holidays for various different reasons, but he ended up really thriving. He studied hard and he learned an awful lot. And this is partly why he's so successful as a grown adult. I think you could utilize a lot of that while you're writing Ebenezer Scrooge's backstory as a player character as well because he ended up being so devoted to his work and his learning and his books and trying to better himself and, you know, eventually make some money, that he ended up denying himself friends and romantic relationships. So there's a whole lot of back history there that's just quite sad in the end. So when we meet Ebenezer Scrooge, he is a human, quite elderly man, and he is a wizard, a very learned wizard. For Ebenezer's background then, I decided to make him a cloistered scholar. 
This is playing into, of course, the whole deeply learning and devoting yourself to your craft and learning as much as you can. The fact that as a wizard, he'll have been devoted to all his books and researches and spells and things like that. And he will have cloistered himself away, eventually just being on his own. I nearly went hermit, but I thought this fitted him just a little bit more accurately. So cloister scholar is what I chose. Alignment is where we will take the pin out and discuss his history again. So in the story, we meet Ebenezer Scrooge as the grumpy, sort of cynical, almost evil older man. And then by the end of the story, he comes good and is lovely again. What I think will be fun is to have that journey in character. So when you first start playing as Ebenezer, you are this grumpy wizened old man who for whatever reason will join the party and start playing with them. And then over time, the party will convince him that actually people are good and you should share things and be happy, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to start Ebenezer in the evil category, and I'm actually going to make him lawful evil. He doesn't think about feelings, he thinks about things logically and, you know, kind of meanly. So I'd definitely start him as evil with the absolute sole intention of making him come good in the end. All right, so festive character number three, Ebenezer Scrooge. When we first meet this player character, he will be a slightly older human male. He will also be a very learned wizard. His background will be cloistered scholar and his starting alignment at least will be lawful evil. All right, so moving on to festive character number four. That's eight. Number four. Okay, so this one, yeah, I got a lot. I got a lot of people asking me for this one. And when I messaged some friends just asking about Christmas characters in general, a lot of them, this was one of the first characters that they said. And ironically, this is the character I had to research the most because I know next to nothing about this character because I haven't actually seen the movies that this character is in. Sorry. So festive character number four that I know not very much about is the Grinch. Yep, sorry, I've only seen bits and pieces of the Grinch. I've never seen the whole thing. I've seen the original Lorax, does that count? When I was looking at what the hell kind of race the Grinch could be, I mean, I, I considered very hairy human for a while. I was looking at rabbit folk and lions and all this crazy stuff. And then I remembered Caduceus. And I decided the Grinch can be a green furry furbolg. He's even got a similar sort of nose. He's got tufts of hair. The ears can be a little bit smaller than maybe the average furbolg and he can just be covered in fluff. So a green furbolg is the race that I decided the Grinch will be. Yes, I'm gonna do this every time I say the word Grinch. Grinch, 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 Grinch. To begin with, I thought the Grinch would be very difficult to put into a particular class because he just seemed to spend most of his time being grumpy. But then when I read some of the book, I remembered that of course it's all written in these wonderful rhymes and a lot of the things that he says are poetic and lyrical and often rhyme as well. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be fun to play as a character where almost everything you say has to rhyme? That would be a challenge, but very interesting. I'm not saying you have to, but if you do play the Grinch as a player character, please, dear God, make at least half of what he says rhyme. I'll be very, very impressed. If you have any suggestions for rhyming things he could say, chuck them down in the comments below. But based on that, I decided that I would make, much like Skeleton Jack, the Grinch can also be a bard. And he'll be a bard in a slightly different way to Skeleton Jack. Skeleton Jack is entertaining people by shocks and scares. He might even be some sort of like magician. Whereas the Grinch is almost accidentally entertaining. Perhaps he regularly mumbles to himself this sort of sarcastic, bitter poetry. Perhaps he gets a little bit drunk and goes into open mic nights and just starts ranting into the microphone. But because it's so lyrical in its anger, people really started to like it. So the version of Bard that I would make the Grinch is more sort of slam poet than entertainer with a lute and a guitar. Although the Grinch could have a lute and a guitar if you really wanted. So the Grinch, <laughs> slam poet, Bard. That is, that is the class I'm going with. Background wise, I think that the Grinch has a fairly obvious one for me. It might be too obvious in some respects. You can put your ideas down in the comments below. I've plunked the Grinch into the hermit category, especially because I want to play him at that point in the story where he has secluded himself away deliberately from other people. He may have been with people as a child. He may have had family and friends, but at the moment, at this point in his life, he is deliberately and firmly a hermit. Because I decided that for me as a player character, I would like to start the Grinch sort of at the middle of his arc, a bit like Ebenezer Scrooge. He's had his past history, he's grown up, he's now an adult, but he's still in that mode of like, he's stuck in himself, he's very grumpy and bitter, and he needs to work with the party and part of his plot during the whole story of the campaign will be that he'll change into a much better good person. However, unlike Scrooge being lawful evil, I do think that the Grinch is more chaotic evil. 
I was gonna put him as chaotic neutral, but I just don't think he's quite there yet. I think that could be the ultimate shift. I think that when his personality finally develops, wherever it happens in the campaign, it might be really early on, it might be at the very end, I think he will shift eventually from chaotic evil to chaotic neutral, and there he will stay. I don't think he'd ever necessarily be quite good, although hell, you could turn the Grinch into a paladin, I don't know. Do whatever you want with this character, but for me personally, I would at least start him off as chaotic evil. Alrighty, so character number four is done. This is the Grinch. He is a very green and fluffy furbolg who is a bard of the slam poet variety. He is a hermit background and he is chaotic evil. This character, number five in the Christmas festive season is Santa Claus slash Father Christmas slash Saint Nick. However you refer to him, Santa is what I'm going to be calling him. So how are we going to build a player character for Santa? Similar to Scrooge, I think it would be quite easy to put Santa Claus as just an elderly human. However, I decided not to. I decided that he is a larger than life character. He's not just a human. He is big in spirit, in jolliness, and in just being able to get things done. So I decided to make my Santa Claus a Goliath. <laughs> I'm just imagining Grog as Father Christmas. He would love it. Moving on to class then, this one was quite easy for me. I immediately wanted to make Santa Claus an artificer. Artificer? 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 Artificer. However you pronounce that word, that's what Santa is. I decided to make him an artificer because in all the stories we hear as kids, you know, Santa creates toys and he has workshops and elves and people helping him and he designs toys and creates things and creates magic and fun. And while he doesn't have to just make toys, he could make weapons, he can make various different things, they would all have a Christmassy flavor. So if he made a weapon, while it would be dangerous, of course, it would probably be, you know, made a bit like a candy cane or red and white stripes. It might even have a faint minty aura coming off it. He can make grenades that explode that are made of baubles, that kind of thing. He can make jack-in-the-boxes which pop up and puff poison gas everywhere. So there's a myriad of things that he could make while still maintaining the Christmassy flavor of Santa Claus. His background was an interesting one. And this background actually took me the longest to decide. But in the end, I decided to make my player character of Santa Claus have the far traveler background. Of course, every year at Christmas, he travels all around the world to deliver gifts, but that's not the whole story. I think that this Santa Claus as a player character would also just love traveling and learning as much as he can, getting to know the people who he's giving these gifts to. I think he'd be a very generous character. He would give things out to children everywhere as he goes past. People would maybe have heard stories about him. There would definitely be rumors. Maybe he's not the only one. Maybe he's part of a whole team of Santa Clauses who just go out to spread joy and toys and things like that. But however you want to play that character, however you want to do that story, Story, I think he definitely has traveled a lot of places and he really wants to see as much of the world and maybe even the multiverse as he possibly can. So Far Traveler is how I have decided my background for my player character Santa is going to be. And finally, Alignment. Well, if there's ever gonna be a character who is chaotic good, I think Santa Claus is it. While he's very generous and giving and he does seem to live to make other people happy and spread joy and everything, I don't think he's doing that based on a set of rules and regulations. He is his own person. And I don't think he's completely neutral either. I think chaos is where his sparks of ideas come from. Believe me, I've got chaos in my brain right now. I think that that chaotic side is what means he can create all these wonderful things and how he propels himself to travel to all these different places and why he's so appealing to children. I think children in particular as NPCs in the world would definitely get along better and be more fascinated by a more chaotic good character than by someone who is more lawful or more neutral. So for Santa Claus, I have gone chaotic good. And that is the fifth character on our festive list. So Santa Claus, the playable D&D character. He is a Goliath artificer who is a far traveler and is chaotic good. Well, that about wraps up my festive video for today. I'm going to continue doing festive things for the rest of the month. So I will see you next Monday for yet another Christmassy video. In the meantime, I'm gonna go and film maybe one or two more TikToks in this wonderful outfit. Again, any guesses for what character I am? Chuck them down in the comments below. In the meantime, I will see you next week, my wonderful jelly spoons, and I might actually have a story time for you on Friday as well. Goodbye, my wonderful jelly spoons. Goodbye, and Merry December. Go eat all the chocolate out of your advent calendars. Go, Morky said it was okay. Go do it. <laughs>